Welcome to week nine of Talking a Little Football. Last week of the regular season, um, Blake Topmeyer, sports writer at the Herald Wig, Rick Little, Quincy High School football coach. Rick, you guys had your big rivalry game last week. Go up to Rock <coughs> Island. Um, you know, I listened to that one on the radio. I wasn't able to make that trip. It sounded like a good game. You guys had them on the ropes a little bit. Um, in the end, they, they pulled out a 22-21 win. Uh, I know you guys have had a couple close heartbreakers this year. You know, you had the Allman game, now you have this one. I'm sure, I mean, where does this stack up there on, on that list of just disappointing losses? To well, take? There, there's no doubt about it. Like, I told the kids um, on, on film on Monday that this is one of the most disappointing losses that we, that I've, that I've had, and, and, and such in a regular season type mm-hmm. contest. And um, for lots, lots at stake, you know, um, certainly you know, we know that it's on the road, and we'd like to kind of get that that uh, monkey off our back of maybe not being a great road team, you know. Um, the fact that it's rocky and a program that we respect, but, you know, beat them last year, like to kind of really put that to bed as far as right. um, that, that streak and those sorts of things. And uh, it, it, it was disappointing. There's no doubt about it. We felt like we played well. That was the other thing. If we hadn't played well, I think you really sit there and have a really poor taste in your mouth. But uh, I thought we played well enough to win. Um, unfortunately, when you go on the road, and, and Certainly not an excuse. It's just a factor that, that comes with it. it uh, it's tough. You know, there's no doubt about it that you're up against it a little bit, and, and uh, we felt that way. But you know, those are things that we knew going into it. You know, so you don't you don't too much so much factor on that or after the fact bring right. that up. I mean, it's what it is. And so um, I thought our kids played hard. I'm really proud of them. Um, and uh, in the end, like I said, unfortunately, it was one of those things where you, you just walked off the field with the kind of a you know kind of in a, a disbelief somewhat because um, I think our kids you know, really played well. Rocky scores with about 35 seconds left. They're down by one point, uh, and they get the two-point conversion. Um, you know, for those who weren't there, kind of take us through what happened on that play, because really, you know, that that's what it ultimately came down to in the end was that that two-point conversion that they. Yeah, got. Um, you know, well, and I think it started before that. I kind of take you to the second half. We were up 14 to six at halftime. Felt really good about our chances. We're getting the football, and we were driving. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, two plays covered about 60 yards. Um, and then had a, had, a, had a sweet play that, that lost us about six. I mean, just the way that they attacked it, did a nice job. Jordan McGriff lost some ground there. And, and so we were in a third and eight uh, critical situation. Felt like we still got points. We got points if we, um, but we want to still be aggressive. I think that was something we talked about coming out. Um, you know, Jordan Zanger had, had thrown a touchdown pass already in the game, completed a big, a big pass as well. We, we had, unfortunately, we had an interception, um, which, you know, we, you know, he loved to have a throw back. Wasn't his best throw of the night. Um, and that, that was a turning point because it was a turnover and in big six games, especially Rocky QHS games, possessions are so valued. And mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, they were able to return the ball down, you know, uh, into our territory. And, and, um, um, and uh, you know, they later got a score, which then uh, they had a, a two-point play where they converted on and um, it tied the game to 14. So uh, we come right back, uh, great, nice, great drive, um, take the ball all the way down. Um, in about 80 80 yard drive, take it down, take time at the clock, go score the extra point. We're 21 14. Uh, feeling good, you know, feeling right. real good because we just really felt like we hadn't been stopped. We had two turnovers, which, you know, has been our bug move this whole year. Um, had, had, a, had a fumble exchange in the backfield and then had, you know, the interception. Um, but we hadn't had a punt all night. So we go down and score 21 um, 14. You know, Rocky um, comes down, you know, working to score. We stop him on a big fourth. Uh, fourth and one, fourth and two type play, mm-hmm. and we're feeling awesome about about two and a half minutes left, three minutes left probably. Uh, unfortunately, the whole night, you know, we've done a great job of getting upfield and, and uh, credit Rocky. I think that's something that we can't just sit there and say, oh, we didn't get a first down. Rocky, uh, you know, fought like heck, you know, to, to, to keep us from getting that first down. But we got a first down, we feel like, hey, the game's mm-hmm. closer to over. Right. And uh, we're unfortunate, but we still have a great punter, Brandon White. So we punt it deep. Unfortunately, we have a face mask on the play. They get down and, you know, closer to the goal line area. Had a crucial third and eight where they completed. You know, again, you got to credit Rocky for those things. They, they're doing them. Um, had another big pass that they got down to the to the goal line, punch it in for the score, and then decision time. And that was, you know, go for two or go for one. We we knew they were going to go for two. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, and uh, they they did it. We had a we had penetration in the backfield. Uh, unable to wrap them up. The kid did a nice job sticking the ball out. Um, 35 seconds left. We still feel good about it, though. I mean, not great about it, but sure. we just don't we just don't want to ever quit. Down right. one, um, we, we needed, needed a good return. Unfortunately, we, we weren't able to get that return. The ball was botched, um, and uh, um, we wanted to get to that 35-ish area for Brandon, mm-hmm. um, but unfortunately, you know, with the, the uh, botched kick, it put us out to 20, and then uh, from that point on, 35 seconds with a prevent type defense, it's tough. So um, it's frustrating. Like I said, the, the kids played really hard, and um, 
just one of those things, like I said, I think that we're, you know, our program's come leaps and bounds, and we're still going to fight like heck this week and hope and pray and cross our fingers and do mm-hmm. whatever we got to do to potentially, hopefully, that that would happen. I know it doesn't look great, mm-hmm. um, but um, but these kids, that's that's kind of who they are. They're going to fight like heck and not going to quit till it's all over. Right. As a coach, sitting in a situation where you're up 21-20, the opposition's got a chance to either tie it with a potential extra point or go for two, what are you hoping that the opponent does in that situation? Do you like it when they come out for two? Would you rather see them kick the extra point and take your chances in overtime? Well, I mean, I think, I think, well, I mean, I knew they were going to go for two, mm-hmm. but I was hoping they would go for one. And mm-hmm. for the simple standpoint, we've already, we, we, we got Dean Angelo, Dean and West Servant who do a great job of getting penetration. We blocked an extra point last year against them. Mm-hmm. We forced uh, an errant kick this year uh, on the, on the right. first touchdown. Right. So I was hoping they'd go for one because not only that, but it all ties the game, and then we have a chance in overtime, and I, I like our chances. I mean, mm-hmm. we really had moved the ball um, the whole night very well. So um, I, I was hoping they'd go for one, but I knew in my heart they would go for two. Right. Um, and, and they did that, so we weren't surprised. It wasn't like we were caught off guard. Um, but, you know, they're right behind their big, you know, 6'5", 290-pound left tackle, mm-hmm. whatever he is, and um, and, and it got, got a push. And like I said, we, we tackled him, but it just wasn't uh, – you know, before we reached the goal line. So, right. um, you know, it's just one of those, I think, in the end, you, you go back and you look at opportunities missed. You know, we were heavily penalized. Um, we It seems like we always are there. Um, and uh, it was just one of those things that uh, those are things you got to overcome. You know, on the road, you may not get all the favorable calls, and um, it just didn't work to our advantage. And, and let's put it that way. And, um, but it is one of those things where uh, there's opportunities. You know, you, you take the – you, you don't allow that to factor. I think if we get the score right after halftime, we've got right. two scores, you know what, we're not talking about this right now. So, um, you know, I, I like our kids. I like the way they fight. And I like our program. I like the way it just continues to um, hopefully continue to get better. And, and this year, yeah, we took a step back from, from last year. But uh, at the same time, I mean, there's, just, there's just little to no uh, quit in these kids. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's something that I'm really proud of. Moving forward now, you know, looking at, at Jerseyville, we've been talking the last couple weeks about – must win situation, must win situation, and we thought, you know, there was a possibility this could happen. You lose one of those must win situations. How do you keep them motivated now for week nine? Well, I mean, well, without a doubt, like I said, I know it's it's a, it's not a great chance, uh, chance, but there is there is. I mean, you're going to be considered. You know, when right. you're five and four. Believe me, when they put those parents together, they're gonna they're gonna look at our name. They're gonna say our name. You know, they're gonna. So that is, you got to put yourself in that position at least. And right. and not only that, but. You know, I'm not. I'm just never been this one. I'm not a moral victory guy. And I think you know, you've been around me enough to know that. And, mm-hmm. and um, but you know what? It is still about you know winning is an attitude. You know, and, and, and a habit. And, and unfortunately, so is losing. So um, I think anytime you can have more wins than losses in that in the, in the column, you know, what I mean, you, you're doing something right. And so that was something that we talked to our kids about too. Hey, give yourself a chance, and, and let's go out with a winning record. I mean, there's there'll be teams that will make the playoffs. At five and four, and, and believe me, we want to be that team. Right. Yeah. But that will end the season without a winning record. True. Because they'll yeah. be at five and five, and people say, "Oh, yeah, no, no, you didn't. You're five and five. Mm-hmm. Well, believe me, we, we we want to be in that situation sure. potentially. But but you know, if you're five and four, you, you have a winning record, and, and um, that's something that you, you know at this point you, you look for continue to look for things that that help your program take the next step. And um, you know, we had a you know two really nice years in a row at seven and two this year. Uh, you know, best we got you know is five and four right now. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, if that's the case, um, we're going to take it, and we, we hope that um, that it gets us in the playoffs. But as far as going back to the original question, how do we keep them motivated? I mean, let's credit Jerseyville a second. I mean, they're going to have seniors that are going to be fighting like heck to get their third win in a row, and right. their third win on the season. So I think it's really disrespectful from my angle if I'm not giving them the credit they deserve. I mean, they're going to be coached up. They're going to be ready to go, and um, and, and, and they're not going to feel sorry for us. I mean, you know, we're boo-hooing because we may have five wins. Well, they want three, and so um, – it's just something we got to understand. Our kids have got to get, and they, they will, and they do. Uh, but yeah, if you let your guard, and this is, I, I told them yesterday that football is not slow pitch softball. Meaning you go out there, you know, you throw the ball around a little bit, you get something bad, so you just, yeah. whatever comes, go. You got to be prepared every week, and I don't care if it's a two and 16 you're playing, or, you know, or, or a seven and, you know, uh, one team, whatever. You If you're not ready to play football and, and, and at this level, you can get beat, and that's something we feel. You know, Jerseyville's got some, some key kids that are uh, a ton, so we respect that, and, and we certainly will be ready to play for on Friday. And Jerseyville, you mentioned, has won two straight. You know, a couple weeks ago, um, they are sitting at 0-6 and, and look like a real easy win. Now they've won two in a row. they got a little momentum. Um, you know, I know you would be taking them seriously regardless whether they were 2-6 and six or 0-8, but 
how does that maybe affect the way the, the guys are viewing them, or how does that affect the mindset coming in this team, knowing that, that they want a couple of Well, I think it keeps us sharper. I mean, to be honest with you, if they were 0-8, we would still have the same respect just because, I mean, I play the game. I know how – I mean, it doesn't – I've coached times when I thought maybe we weren't as um, – maybe we were overlooking, you know, teams. And, and, and not, not consciously, but, you know, subconsciously it, it happened. And so the fact that they've got two wins in a row going to the third, that, that makes us sharper because we know they're very capable of, of – of scoring points and, and getting wins, so um, and then you go on the road too, and let's let's be honest. I mean, I challenge the kids with that. The next step we got to make in our program is, is be a consistent winner on the road. And right. here, here's a here's a game on the road that um, you know that's kind of the thing that now that that not only you know whatever people are saying, but I mean we're 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 looking at too and evaluate and say, listen guys, we we got a bit of a problem here. You know, it seems like we play great at home, yeah. and unfortunately on the road, you know for whatever reason, and and maybe there's some that are very um, explainable, but. But we got to be a better road team, and that starts, you know, Friday. Right. Again, Friday night on the road, as Rick said, Quincy High School will be 4-4 four four going into that matchup, playing against Jerseyville 2-6.